Given the Austrian government's approach to COVID of full vaccination is the only way promoted in the mainstream media, I wanted to add my thoughts to the issue of the response to COVID, an issue which obviously goes beyond the borders of Austria where I live. And I would welcome your comments to, to what I've written here. The, the primary role of a democratic government, I believe, should be to ensure the human rights for the citizens and residents of the country and to support and protect people in going about their daily legal activities. Part of this function is to provide a health service that helps and protects the people who need help, ensuring that these services are not overloaded. As far as I understand it, there is a viral infection, COVID, that can cause serious health difficulties and even death for some people, notably those who already have a medical condition and especially if those people are over 70 years of age. The medical logic for dealing with COVID and reducing the death rate should be focused on the protection of vulnerable groups whilst letting everyone else get on with their lives. However, here in Austria, vaccination of everyone is the only health policy being pursued. Currently, the vaccines are being promoted, indeed enforced, as the only solution despite the fact that the vaccines are not fully tested, not fully approved and not fully monitored in terms of their efficiency and possible side effects. In addition, mainstream published data regarding people in intensive care or subsequently dying do not take account of whether a person died of COVID or they had a serious other conditions but COVID may have been a contributing factor or they died from something else but in the previous month had a positive test. I find, say, say, fascinating the attempts of government and others to blame unvaccinated people for the overloading of the intensive units in hospitals. Notwithstanding the number of vaccinated people in them, there are people who deliberately harm themselves by smoking, drinking too much alcohol, eating inappropriately, or otherwise doing unhealthy things or causing accidents. These are normal patients, amongst whom I could include myself. They are also part of any overload which may occur, as is the government's refusal to increase intensive care capacity in what is almost two years since COVID became an issue. We see propaganda promoting the vaccination of healthy young people, attached to dubious own risk statements and trying to feed the guilt of the young person causing harm to older people. I find such support for pharma industry dependency and false blaming quite frankly disgusting. By the way, I, I'm not an extremist, not an anti-vaxxer, not a Covid denier, but merely someone who would appreciate honest, informed debate about the risks and consequences associated with Covid and the much broader and deeper consequences of pursuing the course of action promoted and enforced by the government here in Austria. What a truly democratic government should be doing is supporting honest, fact-based, open debate and implementing policies in line with the government's main functions of protecting the more vulnerable people and enabling everyone else to get on with their lives. The current practice of locking up healthy people, not providing increased health service capacity, implementing forced vaccination, destroying the economy and persecuting innocent people has little, if anything, to do with health protection and everything to do with implementation of a social regime built on creating social division, suspicion of other people and obedience through fear of authority. The situation is also being used to hide a more widespread agenda, namely scapegoating COVID in pursuing the end of our existing global fiat money system, currently going through the phase of exponentially bloated asset prices and high inflation before the collapse under authoritarian regimes. On the bright side, more people are becoming aware of the situation, and I hope this will mobilise them into peaceful but active participation in a movement built on solidarity, compassion, cooperation, love and respect. Well, that's my view anyway. <laughs> and of course, I could be wrong. So I would welcome your thoughts, as I'm always willing to learn. And thank you for listening.